Hello guys and welcome back to the channel with this time not a retro PC but a retro laptop. Now I have this cold right now and I've been feeling a little bit under the weather over the past couple of days so I didn't really have the energy to complete my IBM restoration or the IBM PR200 overclock project but I decided to drop this little video for you guys the fact that I already had all of this edited video available also helped me make this decision. Because I think some of you might be interested in these old retro laptops. Or should I say luggable, as this bad boy isn't something that you would sit on your lap with for a very long time. Now in this video I'm going to be focusing on the hardware side of things. I didn't have the machine long enough to play around with it too much so so you won't see me running lots of different programs on this machine so that will have to wait for a next video. Now this is a laptop or luggable from 1990 and when you compare it to today's standards like this MacBook just notice how technology has advanced over the last let's say 30 years. It's amazing to think how these things were considered high-tech and innovative in the portable space. So this is an Ultima 2 released in 1990. It's a 286 based laptop with a VGA LCD display. It has uh, one megabytes of RAM, it has a 40 megabyte hard drive, it has a 1.44 megabyte floppy drive, it includes a modem, a full size detachable 101 key keyboard. It even had a ISA 8 bit expansion slot, which was pretty rare for these portable computers. You could upgrade the memory to 5 megabytes of RAM. It had an external port for an external floppy drive. Now as you can see from this ad it had a removable keyboard. At least you had something to put on your lap as the other thing was pretty much a desktop replacement that would stay on your desk. But the machine was pretty well specced. It had a 286 running at 16 megahertz which was pretty fast back in the day. 1 megabytes of RAM, a 40 megabyte hard drive. It didn't came with a battery, but it was definitely portable or luggable. And this computer was called the Altima 2. Now when you think of Altima, you might think of this sedan manufactured by Nissan. Now at one point, the uh, laptop manufacturer in California, which was relatively small, actually sued the Nissan Motor Manufacturing Corporation USA to bar the name Altima for this sedan. Now, given the size of Nissan, the judge denied the request by the portable computer maker Altima Systems. But let's turn on the laptop and see what she does. Now we can immediately see the backlit LCD screen capable of running 640 by 480 VGA resolution with 32 shades of gray. Here it's booting up MS-DOS. As you can see, it has a Phoenix BIOS. It has one megabytes of memory and it's running MS-DOS version 6.22. To turn on the computer, you use the rocker switch on the side here. And as the hard drive is spinning up, and the floppy drive is initializing. You'll hear the little beep that the computer is posting and should be good to go. Now one of the key features of this laptop is its removable keyboard. So you can actually slide the keyboard out of the chassis here and use it completely separate. So you could uh, put it in front of the uh, laptop like so, or you could put it on your lap as you saw on the advertisements. And you could use the freed up space on the computer to put your papers or whatnot. So yeah, it's a pretty nifty design feature. The keyboard uses this standard uh, RJ connector that you typically see with these laptops. So on the left hand side, we have the power switch. We have a VGA output. We have a parallel port, serial port, some dip switches for the configuration. 
And above that we have an AT style keyboard connector and a reset button. We have this slot here on the uh, side, which is very interesting as when we open it up, we will actually get to see what is inside and what's inside is pretty remarkable for a laptop even back in this day because the first thing we see here is an ISA bracket like you see on normal desktop PCs. And when we zoom in, we actually get to see a full 8-bit ISA slot allowing you to insert ISA cards in this laptop. Let's say you had one of these 8-bit ISA Sound Blaster clones. You could easily add sound to this 286 laptop, which is pretty amazing. On the other side, we have a 1.44 megabyte floppy drive and we have a 2400 BPS modem. Moving to the back, we have these little feet here that can be expanded. We have an external connector. I think this is for an external disk drive. And we have an AC adapter built into this computer. So we only need to plug in an AC power cord. So there is no battery on this laptop. It basically needs AC power. So let's take a look how this laptop would look like from the side. So let's uh, extract a little feed here so that uh, we can place the laptop in an optimal position for when the keyboard is also detached. And then you would have a configuration like this, which is pretty neat. Here we have a power LED and a turbo LED for the 16 megahertz. We have floppy drive and hard drive LEDs as well as modem LEDs. And we have the Ultima 2 badge. The LCD backlit display uh, has a couple of knobs here that we can use to fine tune the display, the contrast, the brightness, and also the, uh, we can also invert the screen. So that's also nice. Also found amazing is that we had this little tray here and this seemed to contain standard 30 pin uh, SIM memory. So I decided to open her up to see what was inside. So all I needed to do here was remove a couple of screws and then I should be able to remove the uh, top uh, of the laptop because you need to flip it around again and then you can um, actually remove the entire top part including the LCD screen from the bottom part like so giving us access to the internals of the PC now unfortunately some of the plastic thingies here that uh, hold on the screws kind of broke off because the plastic becomes very brittle over time and by unscrewing the screws these things kind of broke off now I'm guessing they can be glued back on so this shouldn't be a uh, big of a deal so I had two of those that that kind of broke off so here we have the uh, video card which has uh, both a connector towards the LCD and also a connector to the main board. So let's see if we can remove that one from the main board. So I'm just gonna gently wiggle this out of here. And there's also a ribbon cable attached to this video card which is needed to provide a display towards the LCD. Now here we can see the graphics card which is based on the CLGD610 graphics chip as well as the CLGD620 sequence CRT controller chip. Both of these are enhanced versions of existing Cirrus Logic chips but these are optimized for LCD displays. So they are fully compatible with VGA, EGA, CGA, MDA standards. And in addition to that, they also support the Cirrus Logic Auto Map technique, which automatically maps the VGA 256 colors into up to 32 shades of gray on uh, LCD displays. The board features 256 kilobytes of video memory and it has a connector to hook up the LCD as well as a connector to plug it into the main board of the laptop. 
So let's slot the video card back into its place. So we hook up the LCD connector first and then we can attach it to the main board again because the VGA connector which is uh, routed via these pins here allow you to hook up an external display using this VGA graphics chip. Now hidden underneath this metal heatsink here we have the heart of the laptop which is in Harris 286 CPU running at 16 megahertz. The speed of the CPU could be controlled by a keyboard key combination to toggle between 8 and 16 megahertz. Now moving to the other side of the main board where we have this little housing here which holds both the floppy drive and the hard drive. So let's go ahead and try and remove the floppy drive from TIAC which is a standard 1.44 megabyte floppy drive and beneath it we have the hard drive. And the hard drive is a standard IDE hard drive from Connor, a brand which was very popular for these types of computers. And the hard drive was still working fine after all these years with a scan disk resulting in zero bad sectors. So I really hope you've enjoyed this quick overview of this Altima 2 286 luggable computer. I really like the design of this thing and the fact that you can detach the keyboard completely in order to get a full 101 key keyboard at your disposal. I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to look at the software side of things because I didn't have the machine with me for all that long. I had to pass it on to a friend so I didn't really have the time to install lots of software on it. Perhaps I will be able to do so in a next video but for now I'm going to have to leave you with this. So I hope you've enjoyed this little video and if you did please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel. It would really help out and I hope to see you guys soon. Bye bye.